Yo, what's up with it, gang? It's your boy Star Status Chris back with another video breakdown. So for today's video, we don't get into strange music, man. Uh, people that's not familiar with strange music, it's been a lot of different headlines, at least online, regarding like the business of strange music, like so far as the contracts and artists leaving and how the actual structure is between Tech and Travis. And it's been a lot of, you know, in a lot of topics, you know, maybe a couple years ago, I say somebody, I think it was an ex worker that was uh, actually that worked at Strange Music. And he pretty much did an Instagram post exposing Strange Music and pretty much saying that the way that the company is set up is not beneficial to Tech Nine and how that Tech Nine should know this. And he and he pretty much made it seem like a situation where Tech wasn't aware of the actual business that was you know going on behind his back at strange music which i don't know if that's true or not but that's what he put out there so i mean it's been that was maybe a couple years ago so we fast forward now we're getting you know artists leaving we're hearing a lot of stories with artists saying they weren't happy and a lot of the stuff that they had to go through at strange music it just wasn't like good stuff you know basically so for today's video we're gonna go over this uh strange music exposed shout out to it's joe k music now this is a, a a pretty dope breakdown i wanted to go ahead and go through it with you guys and get y'all opinion do y'all think this is uh you know good business or do you think this is bad business i'm gonna try not to pause so much you know with the video because i just want it to flow but when i see you know or hear things that i you know feel like you guys will want my commentary on i'm gonna go ahead and jump in so without no further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. It's a, a kind of a long video, man. So if you, you know, whatever you do, if you roll up, you know, you got to go get something to eat real quick. Go ahead and do that because it's, it's a 27 minute video, but it's a very detailed and it's a very good video. And I, I think you guys should, you know, be y'all should stay with this video from top to bottom. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hi, everybody. My name's Joe K. It's Joe K Music, and welcome to another day in the underground. Today is a very special vlog. We are going to be kicking off what is to be a series of vlogs discussing the structure of strange music. And I think it's very interesting because I know that over the years there have been several theories. There's been a lot of speculation about how uh, Tech Nine and Travis, who is uh, the, the owner uh, of strange music, have structured this deal long, long ago and how it has continued to evolve into what it is today, which is quite honestly, a massive empire of companies. I want to make sure that is facts, man. Like strange music, you can't take anything away from them as a brand, like the number one independent label in the world. They have, you know, just a ton of fans, a court like following. They have, you know, they're, they're pretty much what every artist on a major wants to be. You know, they, they're their own entity. So he definitely is on point on here. Sure that we level set and we discuss what exactly is a holding company. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because in order to understand the full structure of how these companies are tied together we at least need to come to the table with some basic understanding uh, of business and how businesses are run we need to make sure that we at least have a baseline and an understanding of what a holding company is so that we can understand the structure of strange music and the other subsidiaries that are uh, really all underneath uh, a couple of different uh holding companies potentially so let's go ahead and, and let's just look at the basic definition of a holding company i'm not going to sit here and give you my definition i want to go straight okay. to a source this is uh investopedia it's a reputable site online feel free to go check it out it has a lot of information about businesses and how they're you know how they operate and uh terminology and things like that so really let's look at what is a holding company so a holding company I'm gonna skip, uh, is a... I'm going to go ahead and skip through some of this part because I'm going to assume that a lot of y'all already know what a holding company is. And if you if you don't, you can look it up. It's pretty simple. And it's, you know, it's really not something that's hard to understand. So let me go ahead and see if I business can get into, entity. The, into the actual meat and potatoes. Usually a corporate... 
underneath this umbrella, right? Underneath one person, underneath this selling stock in other... Put a company underneath this umbrella, right? Holding... In order to understand what is going on over at Strange Music, okay, you have to understand that there are holding companies that... Or, or an umbrella company, basically, or several potential umbrella companies that have all these other LLCs underneath it. So way up here, you have, let's just say, a holding company A. And then if you look at it like this, right, you have the guy on the top, right? This is a holding company A. And you have Strange Music. You have the merchandise. You have the properties. You have all these other aspects, right? All of these different things make up that one holding company. So... When you look at Strange Music, a lot of people over the years have speculated. They've tried to oust uh, Travis on like, hey, here's here's what you know is really going on behind the scenes. Everybody has shared some of this information before, but they haven't brought the paperwork to match what they're talking about. And so now that is true. Like I told you guys earlier, it was an ex-employee that I guess worked at the Strange Music headquarters and he did a long IG post. I'm gonna also I'm gonna put that in the video so you guys can also read it as well. But he did a long post basically exposing the structure and letting tech know like how he's pretty much getting screwed over at Strange Music. So he's right well, on. I, I figured with everything going on, there's been a lot of confusion over the years. I wanna break this down for people so that they can clearly see and identify what exactly is happening here uh, over at Strange Music. And so I'm going to pull up uh, what is one of the most ironic names for a holding company, considering all the crap that Travis gets? This name is absolutely hilarious to me. I don't know why. I don't know if people are going to think I'm trolling with this crap, but I swear to God, this is all public record. You can go to the state of Missouri right now, and you can go look on their website and pull up every single document that I'm about to pull up, okay? So I just want to make that clear. All of these documents are public record. Anybody can access them for free. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is one of the holding companies that Strange Music is 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 likely under here. Let, let's take a look. Need a freelancer? Go to Fiverr.com and find one in seconds. Or don't go to Fiverr and waste your time Sorry searching for, for freelancers. As you see here... <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me get my crap together. As you now, that is funny. Out of all the names, but I mean, you kind of have to have to expect that from like a big, you know, business tycoon like Travis. Like, you kind of expect that name of being a tyrant. Like, it, it's funny though, Tyrant Holdings. You can see here, Tyrant Holdings LLC, which was uh, uh this this art these articles of of organization were filed back in 2016. So about five years ago and as you look at the the document here you know it really tells you what it's what it's doing here so primarily to perch on and hold the stock and equities interest in other businesses you know that it, it defines what a holding company does and really what the purpose of this is so i'm not going to bore you with all those details if you want to pause you know the screen and read all this you can by all means go right ahead but i'm not going to sit here and read line for line what's in here the key part of this is to understand who the owner of this holding company is and and just to clarify this is the uh registered agent this is on several of the other documents uh this is likely a lawyer's office uh who you know works for travis uh, this though this right here this is our smoking gun so we have travis o'gwin he is the owner of this he's the he's the organizer right and the address here, 1250 uh, Northeast Sloan Street, Lee, uh, Lee Summit, Missouri. That address, and the only reason I'm sharing that address is because that is a business address. And that's the Strange Music Headquarters address. Responsible journalism. So clearly, this is proof that Travis owns not only this holding company but controlling stock in all of the other subsidiaries uh, within this holding company or this umbrella company, okay? It, does that make Travis a bad person? No. 
it doesn't. I I, I want to be clear before we even venture down this road because I know that there's going to be people on both sides of the aisle that are going to be breaking this down. They're going to be uh, having their opinions, and that's fine. You're going to have your opinion of me for sharing this information and for even talking about this, and that's fine. I can deal with. It. I mean, and I don't really understand like why people get so mad. Like, it's the music business. So, of course, we're going to talk about the music and the good things, you know, from a record label like Strange Music and any other, you know, record label. But a lot of people and a lot of fans are actually interested in the business as well. So, I mean, it's just it comes with the territory. So, yeah, man, like don't trip about, you know, when people do videos like this or when I react to them, because I mean, it's just it just comes to the territory. And I'm, I'm very interested in the business aspect of the music. So that but. There's something that needs to be said about all this, and I'm going to get to the point later on here, but Travis isn't doing anything wrong by opening a holding company. The reason you open a holding company when you have several other businesses underneath it, such as Strange Music, uh, Strangeland Studios, um, all the, the merchandise, you know, we're going to break that down further. Uh, make sure to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and tune in next week when i drop the other episode of this which is going to be further breaking down all of the different businesses uh that are within uh this structure here and so it's important to know that he's not doing anything illegal here i i want to make sure that's clear it is perfectly legal to open up a holding company it's perfectly legal to uh own several other companies and put them underneath a holding company perfectly legal right where it gets very interesting, though, is when you have potentially uh, two owners of one of the companies and one that's really the face of this entire uh, holding company, if we're being real about it, right? So we have Strange Music and we have Travis O'Gwyn and Tech 9 who are owners of Strange Music. There have been rumors in the past that somewhere along the line, uh, after they started this partnership, that Travis owns 50, at least 51% of Strange Music. Okay? Okay, when I hear 51%, like he owns, you know, that little extra percent, you know, of Strange Music, it doesn't really alarm me that much because... If you know the backstory of Strange Music and how it was, you know, how it came to uh, came together, Travis basically saw that Tech was in these bad situations with these record labels and he I wanna say he had to pay out of those contracts. So I mean he 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 as much as Tech Nine is uh, you know, a staple and he helps Strange Music, you know, or he is the reason why Strange Music is at where it's at. I don't think you get that without Travis, you know, having the money and, you know, providing that financial uh, aspect to Tech Nine and Strange Music. So I'm not really, you know, him owning a little bit more uh, percentage of the company isn't alarming to me at, at really that much. But let's go ahead and get back in it. And if you've watched any of the other vlogs, you know uh, what those artists who are signed to Strange Music uh, typically uh, incur as far as expenses while they're on the label and signed, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, to Strange Music or one of their other, um, you know, subsidiaries. But let's just take a Strange Music artist, for example, so we can paint the picture here. You have a Strange Music artist, they get signed, they immediately start racking up bills, right? They want to go to the studio, they need to record. That costs money. Somebody needs to pay for that studio time somebody also needs to own that studio and that's where this gets interesting so in our example you have strange music which tech nine uh is partial owner of right so so he is going to get a portion of whatever assets are available to that llc strange music llc you also have uh an artist here who's purchasing from another LLC because if they go to the studio they need to pay the studio and if tech nine does not own the studio tech nine is not privy to any of the profits from that studio of course unless there's something else worked out on the side here all the paperwork which I'm going to present in future vlogs do not support ownership 
of anybody else to any of these other subsidiaries other than Travis O'Gwin himself. So what that means is Tech9 is paying one of Travis's companies for a service and he's footing the bill for it. So now you have a strange music artist who just racked up, let's say they go to the studio and they spend $10,000. Out of Tech Nine's portion, right? We talked about this, Forty. let's just say 49%, right? 49% of $10,000, right? So a little under $5,000 is really what uh, Tech Nine's kind of on the hook for, right? So he pays this over to Strangeland Studios and Travis gets all of that profit. He has to pay the engineer fraction of that. He has to pay for expenses. He has to pay. So when he's breaking this down, it kind of, it kind of like uh, makes me flash back to how Bad Boy is set up. Like with uh, how P Diddy has a set up with Bad Boy. Like he owns Daddy House, and he has a lot of you know different companies that are like underneath that umbrella that the artists use, but they have to pay. So it's like, it's it's. Okay, this is the line between good business or just being like some strew type shit. But I mean, it's pretty much a thing that like a lot of these labels do, you know, from the the biggest labels to the to the indie labels. So that's kind of just kind of the nature of the game. Pay for the studio, the equipment, all that stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, Travis owns all of those assets. Tech nine does not own any of those assets. The only potential asset he has is the artist itself so now that he's cut that check over to the studio he is now taking from the profits of strange music so instead of strange music and tech nine and travis splitting ten thousand dollars that is now that is now essentially ten thousand dollars out of tech nine's pocket that's just one example of how this is broken down you have a potentially another uh, holding company here and we're going to take a look at that it was formulated around the same time period as uh tyrant holdings llc which i again find very hilarious <laughs> we have menacing holdings llc <laughs> travis man what's up with these names my guy like some of these the names of your holding companies like they kind of little extra man like tyrant i kind of get that menacing is like okay all right Come on, man. Got to relax, man. Like, know your voice. Got to relax. <laughs> which which was uh, filed on uh, September 28th, 2016. So you have Menacing Holdings. You have Tyrant Holdings. And we're going to go down here. We're going to look, again, same registered agent. And, again, we have Travis O'Gwin using the Strange Music headquarters as the address uh, of the incorporator. So again, I'm not saying that there's anything illegal here. What I am saying is tech nine is completely look, look, people, people can make their own decisions. Tech nine is a grown man. He's been in this business for a long time. He can make his own decisions, right? But from an outside perspective, what this looks like, although it's not illegal, it does look like Tech's getting screwed in every aspect of his entire business because you have a business mogul who's built an entire enterprise. You have 160,000 square feet of building, right, of of assets. Oh. Okay. All right. I want to just put my, my, my two cents right here. Now, this is where he's not saying that Joe is wrong because, yeah, t Strange music is a, a is a is a whole thing that Tech Nine's built. Like it's built off his back. He is Strange Music. Tech Nine is Strange Music. Strange Music is Tech Nine. But you have to disconnect the emotional part from the business. Cause at the end of the day, Travis is the money guy. He's the one that put the bread up. He's the one that took a lot of risk financially. So when you know he kind of went into this saying that. You know, he kind of he's kind of feeling a way you can tell during this part of the breakdown because he feels like, dang, you know, Travis owns all the assets, but assets of the building, but are like buildings and the the uh, touring and the vans and all that stuff. But Tech doesn't own any of that. Now, that's the business part. You know, I don't know if Tech 
and Travis, you know, they had a conversation because, look, this is all a co- we have the documents and stuff as well. But we don't know at the end of the day if they what type of conversation they had or it could have been a conversation with uh, Tech and Travis like, yo, since I'm, you know, putting up all the money, I want to control, you know, all the other, you know, side things I'm doing with Strange Music. So I want to control everything else. But when it comes to the music part, we can, you know, own that together. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we just doesn't know, don't know. But I just seen that, you know, he's getting emotional right here. And I'm like, that's when... There's no emotions in business, especially when money's involved. So let's get into it. Over there in Lee's Summit. And 10,000 square feet of it belongs to Tech Nine and Travis together. And if Tech Nine only owns 49% of that, we're talking about 5,000 square feet of a 160,000 square foot warehouse and office space worth several millions of dollars likely tens of millions of dollars and when you look at the assets and you look at what is at stake here part of the reason that people open up a holding company is so that they're not liable if one of the companies beneath it you know underneath this umbrella per se go bankrupt so if strange music goes completely broke and they have zero dollars by the end of next year that's fine. Travis is cool. He's got all these other subsidiaries and he owns all of the other assets. We have the vehicle enterprise, which is all part of a separate LLC that Travis owns. You think when they go on tour, they're out there, you know, renting buses from a third party or whatever? No, 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 no. Hey, artist number one, two, and three, go get the trailer and back. I'm going to charge you $100 per day to run the trailer and uh you can go take that on tour with you you're gonna get billed for that and we're gonna own that asset so you have a strange music artist who goes on tour who has to pay another company and none of those profits are going to strange music it's going to the other company strange music doesn't own the trailers that these artists are taking are you understanding what i'm saying are, am, am i clearly painting the picture of what all this means because if i'm not doing it clearly i'm just going to come out and say it tech nine by not being an owner in these other subsidiaries is losing money hand over fist which in my opinion he should be paid for because This entire empire does not exist without both of them together. Both of them, you see? Because a lot of times people see the face, which Tech is the face. He's, you know, the guy that we see and, you know, that's the face of Strange Music. But the money guy is just just important as the talent. You know, the money guy. Without the money, man, who knows where Tech would be, so... Tech Nine needed Travis's money to get out of all of his crappy deals from the past. And I am sure that there is a level of loyalty there that is almost unmatched to many others in the beginning. I'm sure he is very grateful for being bought out of the situation that he was in back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Absolutely. But if you compare this to an athlete, you don't pay the, the, the first round pick the same exact money five years later when they've proven to be a five-time MVP, when they've put in the work. At some point, you renegotiate that contract at some point you renegotiate what level of ownership you should have in them and now he's what he's saying is right on but business man business it's a reason why you have artists always struggling with ownership trying to get you know a new contract 
because a lot of times once you sign that deal and you sign that agreement it's no going back you have some ceos and some owners that they will say hey the deal is the deal i'm not going back i'm not restructuring anything it is what it is and you could have you know they could assign you when you know you didn't have anything going on and now all of a sudden that you're selling records selling merch and all this and that so you're thinking like okay i'm i'm showing my value i should be able to go back and negotiate this and the record label executive just be like uh, yeah tough luck not gonna happen so that's like i said it's the nature of the business you know and to my knowledge there's no evidence that is available to support anything other than Travis O'Gwynn owns all of these subsidiaries. And at the end of the day, Tech 9 does not own really any of them other than Strange Music. Maybe there's one or two here that we missed. But at the end of the day, they're owned by Travis. And Tech may be making money. Absolutely. I disagree with people that think that Tech isn't making any money. I think Tech's doing just fine. He wouldn't be in a relationship, a business relationship with somebody for over 20 some years if he wasn't making money, if he wasn't doing okay. It may have been a long journey to get to that point, but from the outside looking in, it seems like he's doing just fine. But just because you're making one or two million dollars, you have to remember where this all started way long ago, 20 some years ago, which has now turned into a 160,000 square foot asset with all sorts of additional assets within it. The vehicles, the equipment, everything. When did things go awry? When did things change? I think I have an idea of when that happened. Let's take a look at the... Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> just playing, Documents gosh. here. I want to take a look at this document because this is an oldie. This is from 2003. Okay? Notice the uh, business address is different. I did block out the addresses because uh, I, I believe what they may have been using as a headquarters uh, is now a residential property. And so I don't want to put that out on the internet. As you can see here, you can, you can tell it's old because it's all handwritten. President, Travis O'Gwen, Vice President, Aaron Yates. Everybody knows Tech Nine's real name, okay? You look at this. Secretary, Treasurer. Right? This is all fine and dandy. Board of Directors, this is, a, this is a very critical part to pay attention to as we continue to dissect this in future episodes. There's one thing you need to understand. When you're on the Board of Directors, there's a certain power that comes with that. You need to understand that typically, that's going to mean that you have a controlling interest in the company. So in 2003, we have Travis O'Gwynn, and we have Aaron Yates, we have Tech9. Both of these guys own this company together. Strange Music Inc. Okay? Let's go to 2004. For the annual registration report. We have Travis O'Gwynn. Aaron Yates. Tech is still there. But all of a sudden, one year later, Board of Directors is now only Travis O'Gwynn. Hmm. So my question is, is where's Tech9? Where's Tech Nine? Now that's a valid that's a valid question. I give him that. That's super valid because it seems a little weird, you know, just out of the blue. You know, Tech name is not there. You know, so far as on the board of directors. But again, we got to also keep in mind that we're not privy to those conversations that Tech and Travis have. We don't know if it was a conversation had where you know they both agree that hey you know just have your name there since you're doing most of the business stuff and i'm just the artist i'm just doing most of the music so just to put that out there but i mean yeah i mean it's definitely you know weird to see that change this is when things start to get interesting and again i can appreciate the relationship i am not here to dissect the relationship or speculate on the relationship of Tech Nine and Travis. They could be the best of buds or they could hate each other's guts. I don't know and I don't care either way. All I'm saying, Tech Nine, if you are watching this video, I I hope, I hope somebody is telling you, 
somebody has told you to say that, hey, you were a pivotal, crucial part of Strange Music and the success that Strange Music has over several decades in the music industry. And your business partner who's creating other companies leeching from your hard work with okay that's that's now that's strong that's strong i would this is why i say we can't necessarily say that travis is leeching man because he's the money guy and i know i'm probably sounding repetitive saying like he's the money but he's the money guy and he's you see things don't move like let's put it like this in the music industry the money is like gas for a car you know if you don't have any gas for the car it's not gonna move so you can have a a dope decked out car it can do all types of tricks it can do you know it can go zero to 80 or whatever in so many sec like it can be the most awesome car but if you don't have that gas to put into that car to get it to the destinations does it still have that value so we just gotta you know keep that in there so I wouldn't necessarily say that Travis is le leeching off of uh, Tech 9. I think they both got together. They both had a vision. I'm pretty sure Travis seen something when he seen Tech, and he saw that it can be a, a that it was going to be a good business opportunity, and they could actually make millions millions of dollars together. Excuse me, and that's what they end up doing. So that's the part I disagree with. I don't believe in leeching that's necess uh, necessarily. But I get the frustration, you know, as a fan. Because you can tell this guy is a true fan. So I can get it from his stance of looking at the documents and seeing that it looks more in favor of Travis. So I understand it at the end of the day. Without giving you the proper ownership, he may be cutting you a check. And that's fine. I don't care if he's cutting you a $10 million check a year. At the end of the day, when Strange Music goes bankrupt, if it ever goes bankrupt, hopefully it won't. But if it ever does... You have nothing. You have nothing to show for it. Meanwhile, your business partner will continue to profit off of the several subsidiaries that he has created underneath this holding company, Tyrant Holdings, Menacing Holdings, LLC, whatever it may be. He will continue to be able to sign artists to distribution deals. He will continue to sell merchandise. He will continue to be able to lease out the space from the 160,000 square foot building that he owns. My apologies. The 155,000 square foot building after you take your cut from the 10,000 square feet that Strange Music made up of was made up of and your let's just say 50% or 49% portion of that. All the rest of those assets if your names aren't on the paperwork as an owner, you are not privy to. Just to give you an example, I could go hire... I, let's say that I have a company and I sell t-shirts, okay? And I hire some bum off the street, um, some, some freaking schmuck, okay? And I hire him and I pay him a million dollars a year to work for me. At the end of the day... If my company goes from being worth $1 million a year to over a span of 5 or 10 or 20 years being worth, let's just say, $80 million, I'm paying that person that I hired, that bum off the street, I'm paying him a $1 million a year. Meanwhile, my company is now closing the doors. I've decided I'm I'm done. I'm retiring. Well, boss, what about my million dollars a year? I've been paying you a million dollars a year. Okay, but, I mean, I thought I was a pretty critical part of growing your business. Yeah, you were. You played a huge role. Without you, I'd be nothing. Scratch that. Without you, I'd probably still be a multimillionaire. I'd probably still be pretty successful. But I bet you this, this company here probably wouldn't have grown to be worth $80 million. 
but boss, when you close the doors, am I going to get some of the money that's left? Like, oh, dude, there's no money in the bank. I paid you your last check. This is it. But what about all the assets? What about the building? What about all the equipment? What about all the merchandise? Oh, yeah, I'm going to sell that and I'm going to keep that money. That's mine. I'm the owner. Do you see where that goes? Do you see what the problem is in that? That's what happens when you're not on the paperwork. That's what happens when you're not an owner. That's what happens when you're an employee. And I'm being generous here. Because nothing indicates to me that Tech 9 is getting paid for every single one of these LLCs that are within this holding company. That are all basically built off the backbone of Strange Music. So I want you guys to think about that for a minute. I want you to consider what I've shared with you today. And again, Tech, if you're watching this, man, I know I'm probably way out of line, but someone had to say it. Somebody had to bring this to the table. Somebody needed to talk about this. I know people have tried in the past, but I'm literally showing you the documents. I'm explaining how not the music business works because I don't work in the music business. I've never worked in the music business like that. But this is how business works. And it's very easy to see if you know where to look. I hope I've given you guys something to think about today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. There's going to be additional episodes coming with further breakdown, we are going to get way deep into the weeds on this. Hmm. And we're going to continue to paint this picture so that people can understand what exactly is at work here and what's at stake. What is at stake? You know the, the state of the music business right now. You know how tough it was during COVID. You know how tough it's been since things have gone digital. It's a crazy business, and I would hate to see this be a story 10, 15, 20 years from now about how another artist lost out on owning a portion of an empire that was built on their back. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to tune in next week. Yo, so that's pretty much it, man. Make sure to follow uh, Joe K Music. It's Joe K Music. I thought it was a dope video, man. I think uh, the journalism he did so far as getting the documents and putting them into the video was incredible. I also think he had a lot of valid points. And I can get both sides. I can get out somebody can watch this video and be disgusted and mad at Travis. Then I can understand how somebody would look at it and say, oh, well, you know, that's not bad. That's just business. And Travis, you know, that he did, you know, put up the seed money for Strange Music. He's, you know, he's he's entitled to that. So I can see both uh, angles from that, you know, just from that stance. But yeah, man, make sure to like this video. It helps the, uh, you know, the channel grow, man. It helps the content get out there. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And let me know your thoughts and, and opinions on the whole situation, man, down below. Signing out, your boy, Star Status Chris.